Over the past two years, SpaceX has been working around the clock to prepare the necessary hardware for NASA's Artemis III, currently scheduled to take place in December 2025. Especially the company has been devoting a lot of effort to developing the Starship Lunar Lander, the vehicle responsible for carrying astronauts from lunar orbit to the surface of the moon under the program. However, during that time, not much information surrounding the development progress of this vehicle was published. Since its first render was revealed two years ago, so far the public has just had the opportunity to admire HLSS's second rendering. Compared to its predecessor, this newly leaked version has been significantly updated to overcome the unique challenges of lunar exploration in the upcoming interesting mission. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. In April 2021, NASA selected SpaceX's Lunar Starship as the first recipient of an HLS contract. In part, SpaceX won the initial HLS contract because, as a derivative of a commercial rocket, Starship was more affordable than its competitors' offerings. Starship is the second stage of SpaceX's next-generation, fully reusable launch vehicle. At 164 feet 50 meters in height, it dwarves its predecessor, the Apollo Lunar Module. Starship offers a spacious crew cabin for the astronauts and a massive 100-ton claimed payload capability. According to the original render of the vehicle, we know that the vehicle broadly resembled a standard Starship, albeit with its aerodynamic control flaps and heat shield tiles removed. The crew would have accessed the lunar surface via an elevator, and power would have been provided by a small ring of solar panels around the lander's nose. Since then, SpaceX and NASA have worked together many times to come to a consensus on the program's operating mechanism as well as the lander's configuration. According to the latest news, SpaceX's approach to lunar landings relies on orbital refueling, which will be implemented on a large scale for the first time. As Lakeisha Hawkins of NASA's Moon to Mars program office said, nearly 20 starships will need to be launched as in-flight tankers or fuel depots. These vehicles will contain liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which are to be transferred to a specialized variant of starship that has been optimized to land on the Moon. This is called orbital refueling, which is expected to be tested in Starship's IFT-3 under a propellant transfer demonstration display. The propellant transfer demonstration falls under a NASA tipping point contract that the agency awarded SpaceX in 2020 for $53.2 million. As part of the contract, the space agency wants SpaceX to develop and test cryogenic fluid management technology, which the agency notes is essential for future missions to the Moon and Mars. As per the contract, SpaceX's first demo will involve transferring 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between tanks within the Starship rocket. While Starship won't be rendezvousing with another tanker rocket for this demo, NASA considers the test progress in maturing the tech. Along with preparing for the upcoming important test, SpaceX is also focusing on optimizing the configuration of the HLS. On November 2, two purported renderings of the Starship Human Landing System's new design were leaked by the writer David Willis on X. Although neither SpaceX nor NASA have officially confirmed it's right or wrong, we can see clearly that the rendering of Starship on the lunar surface has an identical backdrop to SpaceX's previous official depictions of the vehicle. If they are indeed genuine, these renderings reveal several fascinating modifications to the lunar Starship's design. These improvements further differentiate HLS from other variants of Starship, and they will enhance its ability to complete the Artemis III mission. In overview, the new design of the Starship lander is taller than its previous iterations. Both active Starship prototypes and the initial HLS design stand 164 feet, 50 meters tall. All Starship variants are assembled out of the same 30-foot, 9-meter stainless steel rings. Therefore, by comparing the height-to-width ratio of the old and new renderings, we can deduce that the revised HLS design is roughly 180 feet, 55 meters tall. Remember Elon's famous tweet in September this year saying that future versions of Starship would likely be 10% to 20% longer? As many speculations, 
he will focus on stretching the payload room and the propellant tank. This can be applied to all Starship variants, including the Lunar Lander as the innovation will allow the vehicle to take on more fuel. This decision could be an effort to enhance Starship's performance for lunar missions, which require significantly more delta V, meaning change in velocity, than flights to low Earth orbit. In addition, HLS Starship must loiter in orbit around the Moon for up to 100 days while it waits for its crew to arrive. Larger propellant tanks would allow it to carry enough liquid methane and liquid oxygen to land, despite the loss of propellant through boil off to space. Regarding paint color, SpaceX still prefers white paint, which is why most of their products like the Dragon spacecraft, Falcon rocket, spacesuits, and Starship Lunar Lander stand out with their signature white color. Aesthetically, it's luxurious, right? More importantly, White surfaces reflect nearly 100% of incoming solar radiation, which reduces the rate at which propellant boils off. In addition, black is added to keep some parts warm because black absorbs most of the incoming solar radiation well. In the new render, the paint scheme will be changed significantly as you can see, which might help keep Starship 6 Raptor engines warm in the frigid lunar shadows, maintain propellant temperatures and save electrical energy which would be used to maintain the temperature of the propellant lines around the engines. Starship's four landing legs appear to be slightly modified, similar to the design of the larger Falcon 9, and they are no longer housed inside enclosed aerodynamic fairings. Instead, they simply seem to be retracted and flush against the lander's body during launch. This decision suggests that the landing gear is strong enough to withstand the gale of wind that rushes past a rocket at hundreds of miles per hour as it ascends through the atmosphere. Additionally, it implies that Starship's super heavy booster will produce enough thrust to negate the drag from these four protuberances. To utilize the free resources in space, five large solar arrays were installed, which will serve as the lander's primary source of energy in space and on the lunar surface. During launch, each solar array is housed within a rectangular compartment beneath the crew cabin. Depending on the design that SpaceX has elected to use, they will then unfold or unroll to a deployed length of approximately 60 feet, 18 meters. The solar arrays are spaced 30 degrees apart in a hexagonal pattern. One panel is omitted to give Starship's commander and pilot a clear view of the lunar surface during landing and to deploy an elevator for the moonwalkers. This presence of some sort of solar arrays is also mentioned in a recent paper, namely NASA's Human Landing System, a sustaining presence on the Moon. In this publication, the HLS team stated, SpaceX has conducted development testing and analyses on crew displays, crew elevator, hot gas reaction control system, solar array deployment, thermal and microme teoid debris protection tiles, landing legs, docking mechanisms, landing software and sensors, and medical systems. The new renderings also confirm that Starship HLS will be equipped with some form of small thruster beneath its crew cabin. Normally, the majority of Artemis 3's powered landing would be performed by Raptor engines. However, these powerful Raptor engines would likely generate severe plume surface interactions during landing, excavating large quantities of rock and regolith from beneath the lander. Instead, a soft landing with smaller thrusters would be a better option especially in the context of Elon's vision of a reusable vehicle for interplanetary travel. NASA HLS program manager Lisa Watson Morgan seemingly confirmed this decision at the American Astronautical Society's Von Braun Symposium. She said, We had a cold start Raptor vacuum test that was recently completed. They're also working on smaller thrusters. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.